if IP phones cannot obtain voice VLAN IDs through LLDP or DHCP, IP phones can only send untagged packets or packets tagged with VLAN 0. The switch can identify the source MAC addresses of these voice packets and then adds the voice VLAN IDs to packets and increases the priority of voice packets. In the network shown in the figure, clients require IP phones to connect to the network through switches. Users' IP phones cannot obtain voice VLAN IDs through LLDP or DHCP. Therefore, the voice packets sent by IP phones do not carry VLAN tags. To ensure the voice quality, after voice packets are sent to the switch, the switch needs to add VLAN tags to voice packets and configure high priority for the packets. The network plan should meet the following requirements. Voice packets are transmitted in VLAN 100. IP addresses of IP phones are on a different network segment from that of the DHCP server. IP phones need to connect to switches through MAC address authentication. The configuration roadmap is as follows. Add the interface of switch A to the corresponding VLAN according to VLAN planning. The voice packets sent by the IP phone do not carry VLAN tags and therefore need to be identified by specifying the MAC address of the IP phone on switch A. In addition, enable the OUI based voice VLAN on the interface to increase the priority of voice packets. Configure switch A as the DHCP relay agent and switch B as the DHCP server that allocates IP addresses to IP phones. Configure MAC address authentication on switch A. On the authentication server controller, configure the authentication information required for IP phones to connect to the network through MAC address authentication. Now, let's see the specific configuration procedure. Step 1. According to VLAN planning, add downlink interfaces of switch A to the corresponding VLAN. Enter the system view. To differentiate devices, change the device name to switch A. Create VLAN 100 on which voice traffic is transmitted. Enter the interface view. Set the link type to hybrid. Add the interface to voice VLAN 100 in untagged mode. Configure another downlink interface GE002 in the same manner. Step 2. On switch A, configure the interface to add voice VLAN IDs to untagged packets and configure the OUI. Configure the OUI of the first IP phone. Configure the OUI of the second IP phone. Configure GE001 and GE002 connected to IP phones to add voice VLAN IDs to untagged packets. In V200R011C10 and later versions, LLDP is enabled by default. To prevent the device from sending LLDP packets, disable LLDP on this interface by running the undo LLDP enable command on the interface connected to the IP phone. Step 3. Configure the DHCP relay function on switch A. Enable DHCP globally. Create VLAN F100. Assign an IP address to VLAN F100. Enable the DHCP relay function on VLAN F100. Configure the DHCP server address on the DHCP relay agent. The IP address of the DHCP server corresponds to the IP address of VLAN F200 on switch B. Configure a VLAN F interface for communication between switch A and switch B. VLAN 200 is used for communication between switch A and switch B in this example. Create VLAN 200 and VLAN F200. Assign an IP address to VLAN F200. This IP address is on the same network segment as VLAN F200 of switch B. Add the uplink interface to VLAN 200 as an access interface. Configure a default route. The next hop address of this route corresponds to the IP address of VLAN F200 on switch B. Note that you do not need to configure a default static route if the DHCP relay agent is directly connected to the DHCP server. Step 4. 
configure switch B as the DHCP server to allocate IP addresses to IP phones. Enter the system view. Modify the device name. Create an IP address pool for allocating IP addresses to IP phones. Configure the egress gateway address of the IP address pool. This address corresponds to the IP address of VLAN F100 on switch A. Configure allocatable IP addresses in the IP address pool. These addresses must be on the same network segment as the egress gateway address. Enable DHCP. Create VLAN 200 and VLAN F200. Assign an IP address for VLAN F200. Configure switch B to allocate IP addresses from the global IP address pool to the IP phone. Add the downlink interface GE003 to VLAN 200 as an access interface. Configure a return route for the IP phone. For Mattel 5212 phones, option 128, option 129, option 130 and option 131 need to be configured on the address pool of the DHCP server. Otherwise, these phones cannot identify DHCP offer packets sent by the DHCP server and cannot go online. There is no requirement for the configured value as long as the outgoing packets carry the following fields. Step 5. Configure a AAA domain on switch A. Create a radius server template named IP phone. Configure the IP address of the radius authentication server. Configure the IP address of the RADIUS accounting server. Configure the shared key of the RADIUS server. This key needs to be used in the controller. Enter the AAA view. Create an authentication scheme named RADIUS. Set the authentication mode to RADIUS. Configure a domain named default. Configure the RADIUS authentication scheme. Configure the RADIUS server template IP phone. Step 6. Configure MAC address authentication for IP phones on switch A. The following procedure applies to all models running V200, R00, 9C00 and later versions. For models running V200, R00, 8C00, V200, R00, 7C00 and earlier versions, see the corresponding manual. Before configuring the authentication mode on switch A, set the NAC mode to unified. Run the display authentication mode command to view the NAC mode of an S switch. If the command output displays that the NAC mode is unified, the unified mode has been configured. Run the authentication unified mode command to switch modes. After switching modes, save the configuration and restart the device to make the configuration take effect. After the restart is complete, perform the following steps to configure the authentication mode. Create a MAC access profile named IP phone. When the username and password are specified in the MAC access profile, both the username and password are MAC addresses without separators or colons. Configure the authentication profile named IP phone. Bind the MAC access profile IP phone to the authentication profile. Finally, apply the authentication profile named IP phone to GE001 and GE002. The switches are now configured. Next, let's see how to configure the authentication server, Agile Controller, on which authentication information about the IP phone needs to be configured. Before configuring the Agile Controller, ensure that routes between the Agile Controller and Switch A are reachable. The display of the Agile Controller varies by version. V100 RO3 C50 SPC300 is used in this example here. The configuration roadmap is as follows. Log into the Agile Controller. Step 1. Add a MAC account based on the MAC address of the IP phone. Choose Resource, User, User Management. Click Add in the operation area on the right and select MAC address account. Enter the MAC address of the IP phone and enter the account name randomly. Click OK to complete the configuration. Step 2. Add switch A to the Agile controller. 
choose Resource, Device, Device Management. In the Operation area on the right, click Add. On the displayed Add Device page, enter the name of Switch A. The name is set as Switch A in this example. Enter the IP address for communication between Switch A and the Agile controller. Set the IP address as required. Select Enable Radius in Radius Authentication Parameters. The device series remains Huawei S Series. The authentication and accounting key and the authorization key are the shared key Huawei 2012 of the Radius server on Switch A. The real-time accounting period is not configured. Accounting is performed based on the duration. Click OK to complete the configuration. Step 3. Add an IP phone to the Agile controller. Choose Resource, Terminal, Terminal List. Click Add in the Operations area on the right to access the Add Device Group page. On the Add Device Group page, add an IP phone group named IP Phone. After the IP Phone group is added, click Device Group in the navigation pane on the left, select IP Phone, select Device List, and click Add to add an IP Phone, and enter the MAC address of this IP Phone. Click OK. Repeat the procedure to add the MAC address of another IP Phone. Step 4. Add an authentication rule to the Agile controller. Choose Policy, Permission Control, Authentication and Authorization, Authentication Rule, and click Add to create an authentication rule. Set name to IP Phone, set service type to MAC Bypass Authentication, and set Terminal Group to IP Phone. Click OK to confirm the configuration. Step 5. Add an authorization result. In the navigation pane on the left, click Authorization Result. Click Add in the Operation area on the right to create an authorization result. Set name to Voice VLAN 100. Set service type to MAC Bypass Authentication. Set VLAN to 100 in Authorization Parameter. Click Add in the following customized authorization parameters to add authorization information. Select Huawei from the Vendor drop-down list. Set Attribute ID to HW-Voice-VLAN. Select Integer to Attribute Type. Set Attribute Value to 1. This indicates that VLAN 100 is the Voice VLAN. Select the new authorization information and click OK to complete the configuration. Step 6. Add an authorization rule. In the navigation pane on the left, click Authorization Result and click Add. Set name to IP phone, select MAC Bypass Authentication in Service Type, and select IP phone in Device Group. Select Voice VLAN 100 in the authorization result. Click OK to complete the configuration. The configuration of the Agile controller is completed, which means the configuration of the IP phone into connection through OUI based Voice VLAN is completed. After the IP phone is powered on, it can be authenticated and connected to the network. After the IP phone goes online, you can run the display access user command on switch A to view connection information about IP phones.